Anil, it's great to meet in person. We've uh, been friends, uh, uh, virtual friends, and, and we've had discussions before, but I really want to begin by telling you how much I appreciate your, your work and how much I've relied upon your work in doing what I have focused on recently in building a landscape of consciousness, all diverse theories. You were a great pioneer in thinking, and I want to begin by getting to understand not just your theory of consciousness, but your way of thinking to get to those theories. Well, thank you, Robert. It's a great pleasure to meet you yeah. as well and, and to be here to talk about these super exciting and fundamental questions. I suppose my first starting point for consciousness is to recognize that it exists, that it's something. We're not confused about the fact yeah. that consciousness is a real phenomenon. Um, when we wake up in the morning and open our eyes, our brains do stuff, but we also experience something. And we experience the sound of birdsong or traffic outside the window the taste of the first cup of coffee in, in, in the morning. Uh, Thomas Nagel, I think, put it best when he said that for a conscious organism, there is something it is like to be that organism. It feels like something to be a conscious system. And for a non-conscious entity, it doesn't feel like anything <laughs> at all. And many things can fall under that. I mean, it leaves very open the nature of that conscious experience. He wrote about what it's like to be a bat. You know, the experience of being a bat is going to be very different mm -hmm. from the experience of being any human being, but nonetheless, it's very likely that there is something it is like for the bat to be a bat. So that, I suppose, is my starting point. Okay, and then where do you take it from there? Obviously, you're a, you're a neuroscientist and you have a physicalist approach to neuroscience, and how does that comport to the nature of consciousness? I think both of those things are important, right? One can be a neuroscientist and maybe have a different philosophical view as well. But my background is it's very mixed, actually. It's a bit of neuroscience, a bit of physics, a bit of computer science, a bit of philosophy, psychology. Uh, but the, the basis for it is a kind of pragmatic materialism. Mm -hmm. So materialism, the idea that consciousness is a property of physical material organized somehow and we don't know exactly how. But in the end, it will turn out to be a property of physical stuff. Mm. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I don't think it's the kind of thing you can demonstrate to be true, you know, a priori or, or through any particular experiments. It's more of a strategy. And many things that have been mysterious in science have yielded ultimately to an approach that asks, how is this a property of, of matter, whether it's life, whether it's it's things that emerge, like flocks of birds, or whether it's um, and many other things. This is how we ultimately understand them. Consciousness seems different because it has this property of being subjective, experiential. It doesn't seem on the face of it to be the kind of thing that one could account for in terms of neurons or neurotransmitters or biology or, or anything, really. But the fact that it seems like that from where we stand now with the concepts and the tools that we have now doesn't mean it will always seem like that. And that's partly because we will understand more and more, I think, about how not only to identify things in the brain that go along with consciousness, but that actually begin to explain properties of consciousness. So this sense of mystery, I think, will dissolve. Maybe materialism won't be enough at the end of the day. But maybe it will. Mm. Um, for me now, it's the best strategy to follow. And, and your particular theory, you beast machine, um, what is that to summarize? <laughs> to summarize that, I, I kind of hesitate to call it a theory of consciousness because I don't think it has the specificity or precision that a full-fledged theory really needs. I think it's the step towards such a theory. Sure. It's also part of a larger way of understanding what kind of thing a brain is from this physicalist, materialist perspective. And this larger view thinks of the brain as a variety of a prediction machine, yeah. and that everything that we see, feel, hear is intimately bound up with the brain making and updating predictions about the causes of sensory signals. And what I've been doing theoretically over, over the last years is of pulling on that thread and realizing that, okay, if that's what the brain does when it's experiencing the world outside, that's based on a more fundamental 
principle of brain operation, where these predictions are all about controlling and regulating the interior of the body. Mm. Prediction is a way of physiological regulation. And that that imperative for brain activity it goes right down to the deepest levels of our biology, of our metabolism. It doesn't sort of bottom out at any particular level. And what this means, for me anyway, is that consciousness as we have it is intimately bound up with our nature as living creatures. It's a kind of version of what in philosophy is sometimes called the continuity theory of life and mind, that, that they are not separate kinds of things, that mind is literally lifelike and consciousness is, I think, of an aspect of mind and it's an aspect of mind that is especially grounded in our nature as living machines. The, the term beast machine goes back to Descartes. Mm -hmm. He used it rather pejoratively yeah. about non-human animals, that they were merely beast machines. Yeah. They, they mm. may look as if they feel pain and suffer or they feel really pleasure, are. but no, they're just flesh and blood automata. At least that's what I think he was obliged to say in, in the climate in which he was living. Uh, so I'm sort of trying to rehabilitate the term <laughs> and, and say exactly the opposite, that we are conscious uh, because of our nature as living flesh and blood breeding creatures.